Many of my patients have lots of questions about cartilage injuries to their joints. Now it doesn't matter what joint we're talking about, but for today's purposes, I'll mainly be talking about injuries to cartilage of the knee and the ankle. Now this is a model of the knee joint, but we could also be referring to cartilage in other joints of your body. And as you probably know, cartilage is a nice, smooth, shiny substance that lines the ends of our bones within our joints. Now on my website, you'll find a specific video on osteoarthritis, which has a huge amount of information about what cartilage is, how it works, and the role that it plays inside your joint. So you may want to check that video out before we proceed with this topic so that you understand more. When we talk about arthritis, we talk about a diffuse change in the joint that affects the majority of the joint surface. But what I'm talking about today is what's called an acute cartilage injury. The other term that you may hear it called is an acute chondral injury, and chondral just means cartilage. The most common cause of an acute chondral injury is an accident, and the sporting field is where most of them occur. Sometimes the cartilage injury can occur over time more chronically, where a small section wears away, but in most situations it's an acute injury, where a joint twists and bangs together and a piece of cartilage is broken off or tears loose. Regardless of how the cartilage injury occurs, what we end up with is a reasonably normal joint, but with a focal area where there's been a major cartilage injury. So what I'll show you here with this knee is an example. And if we bend the knee up, we can see this little model has got normal smooth shiny cartilage here. But over on this side, there's an example of what we call a cartilage defect, where you've got normal cartilage running into essentially bare bone. Now bone has a very rich blood supply and bone can heal a fracture or other injury absolutely perfectly and it can actually be as good as new. But cartilage is the opposite. Cartilage essentially has no blood supply and therefore has no way to heal itself after an injury. And this is why as a joint breaks down and becomes arthritic over time, there's no way to regrow or repair that cartilage and some patients may require a joint replacement. So given that cartilage cannot regenerate or heal itself, if we leave this bare patch of bone here with no cartilage over the top, what that means is over time, the bone beneath is exposed to too much shock. Now as you'll learn from my arthritis video, the bone really relies upon the cartilage to absorb shock. And if it doesn't have it, the bone gets very bruised and very painful. And essentially, that's what we call arthritis. So you can think of an acute cartilage injury as a smaller area of arthritis in an otherwise healthy knee joint. So our options are to simply do an arthroscopy and put a camera into your knee, clean up around the edges and take out the loose bits of cartilage. Now if we do that, it can help with reducing mechanical symptoms of grinding of those loose bodies in the joint, but it won't be a permanent solution for this cartilage damage. In this situation, in appropriate patients, we may recommend something called a microfracture. Now remember, cartilage has no blood supply. And the aim of a microfracture is to bring blood supply and bone marrow and stem cells from inside the bone to the surface to help this heal up. How we do this is again via keyhole surgery, we make several small holes about a millimetre big into the bone. And when we puncture that bone, the bone will actually bleed profusely and form a little blood clot in this defect. Now because that blood clot contains bone marrow and stem cells, the blood clot will set and it will actually over time turn into cartilage. But the type of cartilage that your body will form over here will never be the same quality as this cartilage. The articular cartilage you're born with is called hyaline cartilage whereas the cartilage you will grow after a microfracture is called fibrocartilage. I tell my patients that fibrocartilage is pretty much the body's cell is no more gaps of cartilage. It can form it quite quickly and in response to injury, but it's not quite as good as the articular cartilage that you were born with. So whilst fibrocartilage is good and it does cover this otherwise bony defect, it doesn't wear as well as a hyaline cartilage and over time, usually seven to nine years, this can break down and begin to cause pain again. But obviously for a lot of patients, seven, nine years or more is a significant period of time to help their pain and knee function.
Now, whether or not you're suitable for a microfracture procedure in your knee or ankle, for example, depends on a number of factors. How old you are, your health history, and also how big is the lesion. If the lesion is too big and involves a massive amount of a joint surface, then a microfracture is not appropriate. But this little model is a good example of what would be a perfect lesion for a microfracture. And in fact, the little dots you can see there are representing that a surgeon has already done that. In recent years, there's been a lot of research looking at how can we improve the quality and stability of the fibrocartilage that forms after a microfracture. So what patients care about really is how can we get this fibrocartilage to last longer and give them a better result. There are a number of substances that a surgeon can use to actually coat over the top of the area where the microfracture has taken place. Now, these act a little bit like a jelly and they set over the top and they lock all the bleeding beneath the surface so that as the bone bleeds, it won't be rubbed away before it forms fibrocartilage. Although we do need some longer term data to make some conclusive statements about these type of products, the early results are actually very promising and these gel products probably do improve the quality and the longevity of the fibrocartilage formation after a microfracture. If you have a microfracture procedure, you'll be in slightly more pain than you might be from a routine arthroscopy. And there's a reason we call it a microfracture, because those little holes in the bone are perceived as a fracture by your body. However, most patients can still go home on the same day of surgery. You would certainly need some Panadol and anti-inflammatories for at least two weeks, and maybe some stronger medication for a few days if you still had pain. Now depending upon where inside the joint the microfracture took place, and also how big the cartilage lesion was to begin with, will largely determine your post-operative management. So rehabilitation will vary quite a bit from patient to patient. In the bulk of my patients, they're allowed to put as much weight through the joint as they want, but they may need crutches for one or two weeks to help control their pain. Some patients may actually need crutches for six weeks to take total weight off the joint while the microfracture area is healing. We keep things pretty quiet for the first six weeks and at the most you might be able to gently ride on an exercise bike for example. You can expect pain and swelling inside your joint for at least six or eight weeks or more after surgery. Remember, we're actually doing a procedure inside your knee that is designed to make the bone bleed, so we can't be surprised if there is bleeding and swelling after the surgery. In general, I advise most of my patients that they'll be unable to run or perform high impact activities for at least three months after this type of surgery. Most patients will need two weeks off work, but you could require longer if you have a manual occupation. From three months after surgery, and depending on your progress, it is quite likely we could gradually begin to build you into regular activities. And for most patients, this will involve more vigorous cycling and building into running, jumping and sport specific training. So hopefully this gives you a basic understanding of what a microfracture procedure is and why we actually do it. The results of microfracture surgery are quite good in the majority of patients. However, every patient is different and also the size and location of their lesion will influence what your surgeon can and cannot achieve with microfracture. If you would like to speak to me about your cartilage injury, then please call my rooms and make an appointment at any time. If you haven't had the appropriate imaging before then, I can easily arrange those scans before I see you.